everybody, my name's Anna, aka Glitter and Lasers, and welcome back to my channel. Today I am doing something new because we like trying new things here at Glitter and Lasers. I am taking you through a room redo. In fact, I'll be doing one of these every single month, so get used to it. <laughs> but basically, I'm gonna take you on the journey of bringing my house from a house to a home and putting my own spin on interior design. Now, I'm really excited about this specific room because currently, it is the only room in my house that's actually done. Everything else is in pretty much a various stage of chaos. So really this room has become my sanctuary because it's the one place I can go and feel like, hey, my life isn't a total mess. So I'm excited to share how we got there with you today. So the first thing I did was really try to use what I had, right? I don't have the budget to rebuy every single piece of furniture. So I wanted to start with what I did have, which was the furniture from my old apartment. So I had this long futon and it looks like a couch, but it's actually a futon. And I had a coffee table and a rug and a small kind of love seat gray couch as well. So I started with a really good base, right? Nice colors, everything like the hard stuff kind of done. I didn't have to paint the walls. I didn't have to go find a carpet, which sometimes can be the hardest thing in the world. And my existing furniture just kind of magically fit the space perfectly. Again, not normal. But once I kind of saw all these pieces in the space, I knew that there was a lot, a lot that needed to be filled in. It kind of looked sad. I mean, I think you can admit this, this, this looks sad without any accessorizing. So I started thinking about like, what did I want this space to be? What did it mean to me? And I created a mood board. This is something I always do when I design a room because it kind of just helps me keep myself on track. I don't know about you, but when I go to a home goods store, like whether it's, you know, actually home goods or TJ Maxx or at home or any of those stores, I get distracted so easily. Like everything is exciting. I want to touch everything. I want everything in my car and I want everything to come home with me. And that's not like a realistic way to furnish a house. Like you have to keep yourself like on track. So that's what a mood board does for me is just keeps me focused. So I picked out my colors, obviously two shades of blue, a red and a yellow. And then I also looked at like, what did I want to feel in this space? And I really decided like the key term for this space was sanctuary. So I wanted it to be organic and kind of free flowing, but I also wanted it to be inspiring. I wanted it to be a place where I could go and be creative and kind of frankly get away from technology. I'm on the internet too much and I wanted a place where I could go and just be away from it. So I made this amazing mood board that kind of really got me in the direction I needed to go. And then I headed out to go shopping because that's, that's the fun part. And I, I went to all the places. I went to all the places. I was looking for plants and tables and more plants and even more plants and just anything that might bring the space to life. And I tend to overbuy when I shop. Uh, I feel like sometimes you just can't see if something's gonna work or not until you bring it home and shove it in the space. So the first thing I wanted to tackle was this large art wall that I just had been envisioning over the yellow couch. I felt like, bam, this is the wall that you see when you walk in my house. It is the first introduction to who I am as a person and as a homeowner. I want this wall to sing. I want people to know who I am, what I stand for, what I like, all from on this wall, which is a lot to ask from a wall, but honestly, I feel like I nailed it. So I laid out all the artwork on the floor, kind of jimmied it around until I got to a point that I really felt like I liked it, and then I got to work to hanging it up. Now here's the cool thing. Each piece of art in this wall installation is kind of got a little personal meaning to it. So the arches piece is definitely a throwback to my trip when I was hiking uh, in Utah last year. And if you've watched my channel for a while, you know that I had some like near death experiences there and learned a lot and grew a lot as a person. There's also some local art, which is something that's really become passionate for me is getting involved in my community and being more aware of my surroundings. So it's nice to feature local artists in that wall itself. There is also this really cool art deco print, which is just really my love for kind of understanding classic design and mixing it with modern design. And really these kind of set the foundation of the art wall. Now it wasn't the complete art wall and we'll talk about that in a little bit, but it definitely got us off to a good start. 
Now across from the art wall was another blank wall and I couldn't imagine putting more art up there because I felt like it would begin to look like an Applebee's or a Chili's where you just put as much stuff on the walls as you possibly could. And as much as that's fun when you're in a restaurant, oh, Hard Rock Cafe, definitely that way too. As much as that's fun in the restaurant, it's also like very overwhelming. And if I'm trying to make a calming, relaxing space, it's too much. So instead I decided to opt for some shelves. And now I wasn't really interested in this space having too much symmetry. I wanted kind of organic and free flowing. So instead of stacking these shelves on top of each other, I ended up staggering them. Now I found these on Amazon. They're reclaimed wood. They're from a local seller and they're really just solid shelves. So I started with those as a base and I knew I would come back and decorate them later, but I kind of felt like I needed to get the rest of the space figured out first. I also had purchased a lot of greenery. I kind of got really into it when I was shopping. In fact, if you're in search of some fake plants, you should definitely click the links down below because I think like I nailed it in finding cool looking fake plants. So I wanted to kind of get all of that stuff into the space so I could see like how much I really wanted to put on those shelves because I had this like fine balance of A, putting things on the shelves, but also not overwhelming the space. So I kind of put uh, greenery in all four corners. That's because again, I just wanted this space to be grounded in that organic again. I'm saying that word so much because it's so heavily driven in this design. So anyway, I staggered those. I used a plant stand as well to kind of give us some different height. And then lastly, I added this side table again with some wrought iron details and another plant. I also staged that with a book and a candle just to kind of give it a homey feature. So now I had the base of the room done. I had my art wall. I had all of my plants surrounding. Now I needed to do this, these two kind of staggered shelves. Well, I just decided to go full greenery on them. Um, I got these potted, fake potted plants because again, I will kill any plant that you give me. I try to keep them alive, but I kill them constantly. So I got all of these amazing fake plants from, from Target. Every single one of them is from Target. I'm not ashamed of it, they're amazing. And I staggered it with things I really love. So there's a Beanie Baby because I used to collect Beanie Babies. And for me, they actually made me a lot of money when I was a kid. And they're just like a really positive memory of entrepreneurship. And then there's a, a framed art print from a concert I went to when I was in my early 20s. There's a clock because I want to remind myself that time is precious. And there's this kind of fortune teller book thing that I'm just going to tell you I think it looks cool. Like there's no need for it. There's no practical use for it. It just kind of looks cool. And that's okay too, right? Sometimes you could just put things that make you happy in a space and they don't have to have a purpose and they don't have to have a meaning. They just can look cool. Now, the last couple things I added into this room was a basket for blankets because I am always cold as evidenced by the blanket I am wearing right now in this very video. And then last, last, last finishing touch I added was this chessboard. Now this is actually my mother's chessboard. I took it from my father's home when I was visiting over kind of the summertime and I just said, I want this in my house and I want to play chess again. Maybe it's the queen's gambit. Maybe it's just my own like nostalgia coming back, but I wanted to have a place to play chess and it just worked perfectly in the space. And in the end, I have a room free from technology, but full of love that I can just go to whenever I need a break. And you wanna know something funny? Guess who loves to go there whenever they're stressed out? This guy. It's Data's sanctuary too. That yellow couch is his home whenever he feels a little uncomfortable. So if you get out a vacuum or a fan or make a loud noise, I can guarantee you, you'll probably find Data on that yellow couch. So I told you I would come back to the art, right? Well, we're gonna talk about how I got this whole room finished and then I realized the art wall needed one more piece. It just, it wasn't quite right. So I added this amazing piece that I actually got. It's my first piece of art I ever purchased. It is the cowboy riding a unicorn because, you know, that's just me as a person. That is, that is the type of art you would expect I would own. And I hung it up in this space and it's just like instantly, it was like, I'm done. The space is done. And with that, I'm so excited to now show you that space. Let's go check it out.
much for checking out my new room. I hope you love it as much as I do. I'm like, I'm obsessed with it. In fact, it's very stressful right now. My house is not together and I'm type A and that is really bothering me. But whenever I feel that way, I just go into my one room that is done and I sit there and I just take a couple deep breaths and I look around at what I've created and I'm proud and I feel instantly better because if I did it in that room, I can do it in all the other rooms too. And the cool thing is, is you're gonna join me on that journey because I'm not gonna do all this work and not film it. That would be silly. So it really has become my sanctuary and I'm proud of myself. I really, really am. So with that guys, thank you so much for watching. If you like this video and definitely wanna see more home decor in the future, make sure to leave a comment, click the like button, subscribe, and then also turn on the notifications cause that's the trifecta of love and I'm worthy of love. And I wanna help you realize that you're worthy of that love too. Have an amazing rest of your day guys. From my home to yours, lots of love, lots of happiness and lots of peace. So check you later and you get it, peace.